We were shocked back in July um, on a Sunday morning to wake up to calls that our signs on this, the building had been vandalized. Every single sign on this massive long construction fence had been defaced with horrible anti-gay threats and anti-gay words in every way. So I think people think of, of Massachusetts and Boston as very liberal places, but what we found out talking to LGBTQ elders is that so many members of our community are forced back into the closet as they age, and there just aren't places for older folks to you know, age in place that celebrate our community and that celebrate LGBTQ elders and all of their fabulous selves. So this is what's missing in the whole um, range of senior housing that's available. And also we need a lot more affordable senior housing. That's my apartment right there. And I, I was living in a building on Mass Avenue. And I, I think the girl upstairs, she's a black lady and she didn't have a filter. And I remember her telling the people on the stairs, I, I came up the stairs came in and she was on the stairs and she was saying that um, this guy's a faggot, apartment too, he's a faggot. Where I was living, a Mass Samuel, they, they had the thing with all the drug dealers and drugs, it's called Methadone Ma. Well, mm -hmm. Did you hear about that? Yeah. One block away. But anyway, the landlord wanted to, um, I've been there for 15 years, never been, always paid my rent, nothing. And she didn't want, they increased the rent and she didn't want, um, she wanted more money. So she gave me a notice to evict. And I'm so glad, because otherwise I wouldn't have moved. And that was the building that had the, the problems with the people calling me names. But they had all moved out since then. But um, I moved here for a year, so I want to wait till the pride is open and move here. That's why I don't put no pictures on the walls, because. Look at these walls, I have to paint them, if I have holes in them or something like that, so I'm not gonna damage the walls and um, move in there. It is an existing building, it's a school that uh, was built in the 1900s. It's fairly large, approximately 100,000 square feet of interior space, and it will house 74 units. Um, and approximately we're gonna have 100 people living in it, we think that some people might live together as couples or as friends or roommates. So we think we're going to be able to house approximately 100 people. They used to call me. <laughs> ah, ah. They used to call me. You know why? You because it's a compliment? Yes, <laughs> because I used to yeah, call with people and we dance and we have fun. I said, what's the problem? What's the problem? Yep. Good for you. Good for you. That's yeah. the way. <laughs> so 10 years ago, with some individuals, we started gathering information and listening to people and trying to understand people's struggles in the housing as people, LGBT, older adults, were looking for homes or were already living in some public housing. And the more we asked, the more we found out that there is an absolutely need for a place, a, a building, a community as we call it, that would support people in their lifestyle and make people live their fullest life as they get older. And um, I, I raised a daughter. I didn't come out until uh, my daughter was um, two years old and I got divorced because I knew that marriage just wasn't going to thrive and I knew I couldn't have any more children in that marriage. But I, I didn't really know that I was a lesbian until, until then. And then I found relationships with, with women were more of what I wanted. I'm not in a relationship now, and it's interesting, I feel like I'm done. <laughs> I, feel, um, I feel like I'm done, but I'm open to other things, but I, I just have a community of friends who are all kinds of things, you know, and being accepted is, is really cool. I, um, I came to Hyde Park almost eight years ago. I wanted to have my own space, a, a home that, because I was in a condo 
and it was group decisions. And I just got tired of that and I wanted to be in my own spot. And I like to do art and I knew I needed space to do art. So I came to Hyde Park and very quickly I found a community here. So I started on this project working with removing things from the building, keeping a list of what was in there. We worked toward getting it distributed to Boston school teachers and then eventually to the communities. And then they asked me if I would be on one of the committees. And I, I like being involved. So I am on the Capital Campaign Committee, which is seeking to raise funds to do some of the extras for the community that will be here, especially the incident that we weren't expecting last July, where there was vandalism. In that short amount of time on the day that we found out about it, we, we rallied and four and a half hours later, we had a crowd of, I think it was close to 150 people. And it raised awareness of this program and, and um, people sent in donations because they'd heard of it. Um, but I think what, what this showed us and it really drove home is how needed our community is, how much we need the pride and how much we need to be out and proud and courageous about who we are, because the only way that we're going to protect people from the kind of hatred that we saw that day is by the community saying, there's so much love here, there's so much acceptance here, that there's no room for hate. And that's what we really think the Pride represents for Hyde Park, and what we hope it will continue to represent as we build more housing like this in other communities.